is a walk through Edna Bandy, College of the Visual Arts, Performing and Visual Arts. And another nostalgic moment, one of bless of the security who has decided that he's going to be our personal bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a, a known for drama school, this beautiful amphitheater. Right. There are so many wonderful plays that, that, that we could just watch. Even our own plays, we could have just, you know, rehearsed them right here. And it's, this space is still full of vibes. Still full of vibes. The tree of life. The tree of life is where Oko was sending me, and I'm almost sure that tree of life is round the bend here. Oko said we must meet him under the tree of life. That's how the tree holds under the sun. No, I think I know. Look here, Oko. I from me 19 without trampling my place. I know. Yeah, I know, you, know, you know that you know that I taught I, I, I gave a thought to Paul. Mark no, um um Norris man. But Norris work still over the, the weight name then up from big time then up. Over over um the, 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 the art school and the ceremony okay. I've come usually come here from Engo with people like Noel Wife and Kadwa. Right? Right so But we work out with all of us were under the tree. Alright, but it's still alive. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. Because when we get up, I get from me. Yeah. We're always well, smoking her you know. here. Yeah, all right. So one of the time, Jerry, um, him name Craig, who was, is, who, 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 who was the dean of the uh, 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 Creative Arts Center, because yeah. Creative Arts Center. Yeah. Him say no smoking, and him always send police. So, even you could have walked from this so because the after and you could have just come Exactly, home. I remember so, that. So I remember come, that. You could have See, you reggae strong. All right, reggae strong. All right, remember, yeah. All right, just around here, so we we'll do the interview, you know. Yes. I mean, yeah. It's a life journey and we really intend to bring you a life journey. So you know that the Poetry Association of America has declared April as a National Poetry Month. So it's not really a declaration happening in Jamaica, but we use the opportunity at all times to celebrate each other. And the poets, as the ones who are the conscience of the people, with no exception, are the ones that we celebrate on Life Journey. So when we thought about celebrating National Poetry Month, could we interview them all? But one for sure I definitely had to interview because of the richness of his journey. And that is Orlando Wong, when we are youth, we used to call him Fire, and then uh, uh, his name changed to Oku. He changed his name to Oku Onoro. So is our Lando Wang, otherwise known as Fire, and the poet Oku Unuro, who we were then a long time know as the godfather of dog poetry. So greetings, Oku, Life Journey TV. Bless up, up, <laughs> up, up, positive and young vibration of All right. Great, great pleasure. Wonderful. So we, we, we can't, if we say journey, we're gonna say journey, you know. So I remember reading about Orlando. Now, but labor at the point here, but we said journey. So I remember as a youth growing up in Harborview, uh, we are East people. So we yeah. used to know who are going with East people. So the Warwick Hills environment was an environment that was very close to us, are East people, them there too. And I remember growing up hearing about this brethren named Orlando Wang. And reading about this virgin name Orlando Wang, 
who them used to call the Jamaican rabbit. Uh, <laughs> you see, I, I've been labeled, I've been, I've been labeled um, Robin Hood, you know, on more than one of your channels. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. All right, so just fill us in very briefly about that past, and then we can just quickly move into how you started. Okay, you know, say, the barn under the clock, and then when we leave from um, the Jubilee Dictator, a Franklin town, and the first place that I can remember living was one York Street. One York Street. Let me just declare that I, I, um, I don't speak English very well. A Jamaican mature. People okay. call it Patwa, but when I deal with Patwa, call them call it American English. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a Jamaican kind Anyhow, so yeah, the ju Jubilee, um, um, Victoria Jubilee Hospital. And um, we went to York Street, right? That are, that are um, in a Franklin town, you know, close to Franklin. Yeah, you know, to Binion town. Yeah. So, um, one York Street, and one York Street was the last yard by York Street. When one York Street, after one York Street, attracted some fierce things, fierce water. And then you had a burying ground. And by the time I reached like teenager, it was not used anymore. People were spotting. Because I can remember, you know, you passed through and you see all them up clear a place to build them thing. And a skull and all them kind of thing there. I can remember us sitting on a tombstone. Brownstone burial ground there, sir. Which part is it? The damn the center, down a um, down a Bronx down there, sir. No, Frank, no, 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 Bronx down there, sir. We there the computer center, computer center, and all that. So, how that influence your thinking as a teenager? Alright, you know, say, we kind of go different. Um, some of my mother moved with us, uh, you know, Franklin Town, but we call it Bronx Town, Franklin Town, so the first place I recall after was one the yard street. It was the last yard by yard. But then I had Upper York Street too. So I live on York Street and I live on Upper York Street twice. So I mean he's, he's a East man, he's a Bronx Town man, a Franklin Town man. My mother would not pass somebody who was begging. She always had something to give. My mother was always the one who listened to people's story. You know, hear some people have a passion of rescuing dogs. My mom would rescue people, give them temporary shelter. I would come home and my mother said, Don't go down there, you know, because from a very young age, I had my own room, which was a smaller single bed. I tell my mother, where you could have it full up. But that was my room. And then my grandmother had a room, and my mother had the front room. Okay. Mother said, Don't go. I said, What do you man? And she said, yeah. but Why? Why are you not go down there? I will tell you. I will go down there. When we go down there, we come so pull and pull the curtain because there wasn't a door. I see a young lady sitting on the bed. Sitting on the bed. A young lady sitting on the bed. With a little baby in her hand. So, I will tell you. I will tell you. I will tell you. Because she doesn't see me. I will tell you. I will tell you. Yeah. All right. So, so because of that, now my my upbringing was a, a, a upbringing of, 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 of caring, and for some reason, somehow the spirit that rebellious spirit, you know, I just did not like bullies, you know, I don't like bully, I don't like bully, um, you know, yeah, I don't like certain things. Like so I was very peculiar, and um, therefore I didn't hang out with my peers were into some other things so my the people i used to hang out with were, 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 were much older you know man, man who are work and all them things there there was a rasta man now named Migos, right and Migos was a pan africanist a rasta man but you know um Migos that about house assault and all them kind of thing yeah, yeah. and um Migos was fiery and Negus actually captured my attention because I was very curious. 
I mean, like, one of my favorite subjects was history. You get a new book for the term, new term. Me read the whole of the history book. Me read half the history book before me go to the history class. So when it is coming like four, because I'm, yeah, yeah, so I'm, I, I, I'm interested in history. Them kind of thing. So Negus was a fierce Pan-Africanist. And the bridging who gathered around Negus were, 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 were progressive, you know? Um, for example, there's one bridging who gave me finding of the third eye, lots of rap. He was into Buddhism and all that. Hold on, I don't want to. But these were brethren in, in a space where we would have called ghetto. Yeah, man. And no. these were the books that these brethren were reading at the time. Yes, yes. Which speaks to the difference between then and now. And now. All right, we are. Right, all right, so, so in that circle, Negus was the one who dealt with that. And Bobby Righteous had a bridging him. Bobby Righteous. Bobby Righteous. Yeah, there I see. Um, you know, I set up a militant bridging. You know, the man, the militant. So I was drawn to that. That attracted me. And um, we used to uh, import books from Panaf books. And when Panaf, um, we, uh, we, 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 we instructed Panaf to make the stuff look like Christian literature. Because at the time, the books were banned. Them subversive books, they, literature. Yes, yeah, sub subversive literature. So we, you know, a whole heap of subversive, I mean, about one, two, three, four books. Who leave them days then? Subversive literature days, those days was anything we could have free your mind. Yeah, uh, okay. So, um, at one time, uh, at one stage, we said, you know, the, the educational system is inadequate. And we, um, Degos, you know, spearheaded that movement. Bless up Negus. You know, um, you know, uh, you know, Bobby culture, conscious Bobby, we call him. Um, you know, show the idea, start a school. So we started a school, right, called Tafari. And this school was held after school, after the regular school so We said, we don't have class with anybody. We start school right, when regular, no, so, yeah. And every evening, the youths came, they got a meal. Negus raised a whole heap of pigeon. Says either Carmel porridge and what are, 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 are pigeon soup, but every single evening the youths came, right? We had bridgings and sisterings from the University of the West Indies, um, you know, I mean, young doctors, um, you know, interns and, and all of that. They would come to Tafari, come check, yeah? And they would provide a sort of health care for the children. You know what I'm dealing with? So I got caught up in the whole of that and you know, you know, learning about Czech and Samara Marshall and them people and you know, but Czech Guevara was my hero. You ask, why do you write so much about blood and sweat and tears? Don't you write about trees? Flowers, birds, dogs. Yes. I write about trees, trees with withered branches and civil roots. I write about flowers, flowers in grapes. I write about birds, cage birds struggling. I write about love, love for destruction. There was a moment in my career, Oku, that I wanted so badly to play more Oku on the radio. However, it was just so much fire that even me, it said, do we have the people them ready for this? So there was a poem that gave me a little ease because I could play this one. Think. I've been thinking of Oku. <laughs> When the blood curled in sound of Jaffa's souls, arch the hip of them, wall to wall, When the stench of unwashed bodies and cess food, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. That poem was written, um, there was a, a sister now by the name of um, Cheryl Lee Ralph. Yes. So Cheryl Lee Ralph was 
a student in the US and she would visit Jamaica regular. Her mother had a was a fashion designer. Okay. And she would do some radio apprenticeship thing. And I would listen to her. And I wrote the poem. You know, and I don't know. It's you know being a poet. It was like I was infatuated by this lady, you know. But her energy and what she was doing, and you know the beauty, and because when people think about O'Connor and the poetry, them think about you know revolutionary song. But no, we write about things that impact on us. We write about things that, that stir us. Okay, while I have you here, take us through the connection between your poetry and the dub and how that, 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 that relationship formed, where it then became dub poetry. We need that on record. Okay, now, when I write and I became aware of that, one that wants to be a career before, you know, Mervyn Morris, Barbara Pinder, um, you know, the Pops, that stuff. You know, I call them the Trinity. I literally weave my poetry with a rhythm, conscious. If one look at my work, how it is structured, Mervyn Morris recognized that. It forces you to read it a certain way. In a certain rhythm. It, it, in a certain rhythm. Sketches it at, 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 mangus upon the shot. It rains, 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 and shot, jump, 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 Right now, Bongo Man went drinking and that is funny. down the street, 13 with some dead pressure. Let me get charged. Got you. So one of the things that we have to talk about, especially in a month like this, as we celebrate poets, is that while you were incarcerated, give thanks to the Most High, you found a way to redirect that energy, and that was sweet poetry. Dub poetry, you are called the Godfather of dub poetry, because the first dub poet I know was up to norm. The first before I, they were I just poets. Before I, yes. they were just poets. I remember Without that. any apology, I said. How did that come about though? Take us through the, 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 the genesis. So, we are doing this correspondence course, course in a creative writing, right? Sponsored by Ruby My Love, who else? My mother, right? I pay for this, because it's not what the government did. This was not something that the, the, the system offered. In, it was never ever done before. You understand? Man a book and man have a whole bag load of book, but I was doing a correspondence course of ice. Yes, we have received. Right? So, in doing that now, I was seeing what was happening around me. And what I saw from being observant, not just some man in a you know in, in, in a prison walls and bars of wall and you know. That's a different thing. I see some youths, mainly youths, marching towards a future this. And I was like, wow. And when I look and me I say, yo, oh, what led them here? What caused that? And it's the same thing with me that deal with. The same thing that I was rebelling against. No, I was penned up now. I see them. You understand? Not those people who come and them and them grow. You understand, man? Come on. We are in a space now where it's a microcosm of the bigger picture. Okay, yes. so, Mr. Wagwan, and 
I start to write about conditions that led the ones them will lead the one them in a prison. So somehow it come out, you know, and a man in time when we wake up or we come out of the cell and say to me, say, yo fire! Boy, you, you have anything you, you have anything new? I mother say, yeah man, listen, oh, dread times, hurt a blade, times. man a rage, man a for living a shanty food piece, and no? clothes really can't eat. Cost a living gets so high, man a for shopping with them high, and them your days, not even rain won't fall from the sky. Man broke, man won't walk, man a fret, man don't know where the next meal a come from, yet every ton man make trouble set. You understand? I'm on that say, whoa. Yes. So, I smuggled out three points. Entered the, the festival coming, the literary section, segment, or the, the, um, the literary competition. Yeah. And I entered three points, three different um, categories. Okay. Without the knowledge of the prison authority, wasn't given permission at all. They were smuggled out. They were smuggled out. Um, and I won an award in each of the category. I didn't get any gold. But then at the end of these competitions, there's a, the, the, the judges give a report. And it would be like, for example, the poetry at Tom Red come out through the library. The, the judges report would be placed there and in 1976, the judges said that the poem, Dread Times, signaled a new trend in Jamaican poetry in that it introduced the reggae rhythm. And I me say that poetry is a universal language. Yeah? Bob Marley is one of the greatest poets. He was one who influenced. Yeah, of course, you have missed one of them. Right? But then it's the way a poet presents his work. Because when you a song, when you just write it, That's it's a point. poem. And then when you put it to music, yeah, it, it becomes li li lyrical. Li yeah, you know, melody and all that kind of thing there. So it's it, it, it's a talent of the poet. Oh he delivers it. So if a man ever buys him, come he can't sing. But I do believe that. Beautiful speaking body. You know, I, I, I recognize that. And the power, you know, the power of the word I can not stop repeating the power of the word. The word for people talk about the power word, but they don't really know what the power of the word. So anyhow, I decided, you know what? Drama speak. Because the poem is the mother of theater. Because you can see your point. I need to get to you in time. Where are you playing? I'm not saying I have no fear for this or suffering. You can Suffering on the this or son, I tell you, it's no fun. Hurt you, but lick, tear your sponge at jail. No fear. That's the lot I have to bear. I get to you in time. True soul, we are down to the touch the ground. Why are you fighting? I don't say I know. But this is a sufferation. Yeah, a holy power. So you can put that on stage. That one, you can dramatize that. I mean, I mean, you can, you can put that on stage. So initially, this was what was staged. So. Poetry is the essence of theater. So, we have a life journey. And one of the things about life journey is that each journey is peculiar. If you find, say you have a journey and everybody have the same journey, it means that somewhere in that journey they are followed. So we really want to find authentic journeys. And every two journeys will never be the same. We're never going to have an interview ever again with someone like Pope and the journey 
that he has for you. I just want to say give thanks to Uncle Lord for allowing us and finding this place. Because it's just his suggestion. Jamaica School of Drama, Edna Manley, Manley College of Visual and Performing Arts. Where so much memories and history still is. I just want to say give thanks to Uncle for agreeing to this. Because as outspoken as he has been in this interview, he's not a very outspoken person all the time. So I do give thanks that he agreed to this and was as outspoken about his journey as he has been today. What is your journey? One thing I know about journeys is that no matter what your journey is, make sure it leads you back to yourself. Make sure you learn something that can enrich your life. Make sure, say, your journey, no matter how deep and no matter how, no matter what, make sure you learn something from your journey that will enhance your life. Different journey. And when you say life journey, you know, put your face in a journey, we say, guidance and protection on your life journey. See? Yes, 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 flow, we are flow. <laughs> this is not a fairy tale about Ansel and Gretchen. This is a reality. Ah. I tell, I tell, I tell no tea. I tell of reality. About the people them are wailing this concrete hell about things and times I tell. Of crimes against humanity like poverty, pain and grief. Where the people them are feel, I tell. How oh, afraid them afraid every step them must step. Eh? Trouble takes set every turn them men, I tell. Of the terror in the night, the flight from the fire and the blood. No. Oh, fear take hold, confusion control, I tell. Of the lying men I tell, them talk about human rights, human rights. But all I say is few, is few, is human rights and that no lie I tell. Oh, them all we done with them politics and them diplomatic tactics I tell.